Martha Payne is an unlikely global star. The young girl from Argyle is changing the lives of thousands of children in one of the world's poorest countries. Her simple blog on school dinners hit the headlines and won worldwide attention. It's now helping to feed those who are going without. This is the story of how Martha raised money to buy meals in Malawi. Scotland has started her own food blog called Never Seconds. She showcases just how disappointing her school lunches are and she's gone viral. Check this out. Every day, Martha Payne takes a photo of her lunch. She's not always happy about it, saying, I'm a growing kid and I need to concentrate all afternoon and I can't do it on one croquette. Do any of you think you could? No, Martha. I don't even know what a croquette is. Martha Payne dreams of being a journalist, but she didn't expect to hit the headlines at the age of nine. Why would anyone listen to a little kid talking about food? They would probably think I had nothing to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they would probably think I was going to say something like, chocolate's not good for you. Eat apples. Don't eat chocolate oranges. Eat real oranges instead. Boring. <laughs> That's what they probably expected. Well, we wanted to do a blog because I wanted to do writing projects, but we thought of school dinners because I always came home hungry and we've always wanted to do something about them, but we've never actually been bothered to. Then we decided to do on that. So why do you come home hungry from school? Well, because sometimes the meals are a wee bit small and sometimes I don't eat them that much because they're not very nice. Martha might not always be keen on her school dinners, but Argyll and Butte Council weren't impressed with the attention her blog generated. Especially this centre page spread in one of Scotland's best-selling newspapers. The council banned her from taking photos in the dinner hall, but that just made her site even more popular. So they had a rethink. By that time, millions had logged onto the site. The blog may have started as a writing project, but Martha saw an opportunity. She thought she could raise £2,000 for charity. Well, I had the idea to raise money because someone made a uh, comment on the blog saying, why are you complaining at least having school meals? So then we thought about the people who didn't have school meals and decided to raise money for the people who didn't. As the hits on her site soared, the donations rolled in. She's now raised over £117,000. Did you ever think you'd raise that amount of money? No, not at all. <laughs> and how did that make you feel? Absolutely startled. I don't know what that means. <laughs> don't put that. <laughs> Absolutely can't say amazed because I've used that a lot. Hmm. Absolutely shocked. There's a good word, shocked. <laughs> Martha chose to support local charity Mary's Meals, which feeds children across the world. Mary's Meals is just a very simple thing. It's aimed at helping the very poorest children in the world who so often don't go to school because of poverty. Uh, and we break that cycle of poverty they are trapped in by providing one good meal every day in their place of education. Martha's grandpa volunteers in the local shop and gave her the idea in the first place. He was amazed by the amount of money she'd raised. That weekend we looked at the counter on the blog, both the number of views of the page and the amount of money that was given and the counters couldn't keep up with the money that was being given. She kept on refreshing the page and finding that was another £500 being given. It was quite amazing. I was actually in America at the time when, the, when uh, all the media uh, interest uh, blew up. So I, I was uh, aware of the coverage through like the New York Times and the Miami Herald and the Washington Post and CNN and all, all these um, media outlets were covering the story. And it was just this incredible, unexpected surprise for all of us. 
so it may seem like good news all round, but life in Loch Gilphead wasn't the same. Some people at school were a wee bit nasty and bullying me, but that's okay because they moved up to high school. <laughs> it's not been the easiest year, it's been a very exciting year from lots and lots of points of view. Living locally in a small community, um, the controversy that the blog has raised has really been quite difficult. Um, it's been something we've been very conscious of because we live in such a small community um, and and so that's been a very difficult balance at times. Things might have been difficult at home but around the world others took inspiration from Martha's blog. Hi, I'm Maya, I'm nine, and I'm in Perth, Australia. Hi, my name is Courtney Pisano, and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, USA. I raised $563.75. It was a huge inspiration for me. She really is an amazing person. Now I want to do what Martha was doing and help build a school kitchen shelter in Malawi. Food is important to this family. They have a small holding and raise their own sheep. Polly, can you spot the ones for the freezer this year? This one, this one, and the white one for that. The children are taught where their meat comes from. There's also been an outing to the nearby slaughterhouse. I don't bring money home each week and put it in, put it in the jar, or put it in the bank. I put good food on the table, and that's really important to me. And then I'm there for the kids after school, and I'm there in the holidays. And but then the rest of the time, I see that as my role. It's what I do. So when it was clear that Martha's blog had raised enough money to build a kitchen in Malawi, they decided to cancel their summer holiday in France and head to Africa instead. In Loch Gilphead, Martha's kitchen just feeds the family. In Malawi, her kitchen will feed 2,000 children. Well, once I was feeling really sick at lunchtime because I was so hungry because I didn't have any breakfast. <laughs> And it was making me feel really, really sick and horrible. They must be so hungry and I don't know how to manage them because we have food at the weekends but sometimes they don't. So on Monday morning they must be so, so, so hungry. The whole family are thinking about what they might face. I'm wondering how the kids are going to cope with seeing such a different environment, um, whether they're going to understand what they're seeing um, and how that's going to affect them. Um, I've been to Africa before and I've travelled in that sort of environment and I'm very aware that it's, it is very different um, and, and very life-changing experience really. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Here we're always worried about how badly off we are. People in Malawi don't have very much, but they're remarkably happy with what they have. And if they can learn something of that lesson, that there is more to life than the material things, it's, it's having somebody to care for you and having the basics in life, that would be a really precious thing to learn. Malawi, home to 15 million people. Three quarters of them live on around 60 pence a day. HIV has swept through this country. One million adults are thought to be living with the disease. 70,000 die of AIDS each year. These orphans are among those left behind. Most have HIV themselves. Some walk miles to this centre run by Mary's Meals. Here they get two meals a day, as well as lessons. It's a long way from Loch Gilphead. But this is the world Martha and her family have come to see. Meet Ben. He lives in a small village with his mother and brother. He likes playing football. Same here. 
<laughs> Even though they live thousands of miles apart, the two children have some things in common. <laughs> Most children in Malawi live in rural areas, and their day usually involves many chores. It's, it's, a, it's a young lamb, so it's a small sheep, and we, we eat those when they're about eight months old. Owning livestock in Malawi is rare, and Martha's house and her family are proving to be a real source of fascination to the village. <laughs> the camera is a new toy for these young children. Like four million others in Malawi, they live in desperate need of food and their mud hut is their only shelter. The insides, I thought they were going to have like just paint or something or just plain, but they had n nothing at all and <laughs> nothing. And no furniture, and for the doors they had blankets. Blankets hung on the door frames. <laughs> Martha also learns that even preparing something to cook is hard work. <laughs> but ten-year-old Ben hopes to change his life. He takes Martha to his school. Only a quarter of children here stay on till secondary school. Ben says he will be one of them. He knows that when he gets to school each day, he'll get porridge provided by the charity Mary's Meals. And it's children like Ben, Martha and her family hope to help. Clothes are dirty, full of holes, um, but the kids in them, smiling, wonderful, chatty. I think it was a real eye-opener for, for my children to see that. They were welcome with open arms, come and see our house, come and meet our children and, and it's the same parents pride you know the, the mums and the dads they, they tell you about you know how old their kids are what grade of school they're in going to school is so important for them and they tell you how far their kids have gone and so we were just we were welcomed in, in such a wonderful way it was slightly unexpected but fantastic oh them was so nice it was really funny <laughs> uh, what kind of things did he show you um, he showed me his house his school and the water pump. Ben's lucky. He lives 10 minutes walk from water. About half of all children in Malawi don't live near a fresh water supply. But even those that do have to carry it back. This bucket weighs about 20 pounds or 10 bags of sugar. Are you okay? Yeah. No, put your head up. Are you okay? Are you okay, Martha? Yeah! <laughs> no wonder Martha's finding it hard. Children here practice this skill from the age of three and she's only carrying half the weight. <laughs> she manages a few hundred yards at least. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so I'm putting the water in, but I'm carrying it. Oh, I know, a sore head. After a day of village life, thoughts turn to the big day, when the family will open Martha's school kitchen. I'm reassured that it's going to be a wonderful welcome. Um, I think my real nerves are about how the kids handle the emotional side of it, because what she's done is making such a, a huge difference. You know, it is a, a fantastic thing that's been achieved but there's going to be such gratitude coming from the kids to Martha. And it's really kind of not just Martha, it's for everyone that's made those donations and supported Mary's Meals. Oh.